When she was just two years old, Carly Fleischman was diagnosed with severe autism. After years of behavioral and communication therapy, she had a breakthrough at the age of 10 that was nothing short of incredible. Carly was able to find her voice with the help of a computer. So just go in the front here, hon. Go in and then we'll go grab a snack, okay? Come on. And now with the help of her dad, Arthur, she's sharing that voice with the world in a brand new book. In it, they explore firsthand the challenges of autism, unlocking an often mysterious world with Carly's clarity, humor, wit, and intelligence. Carly's dad, Arthur Fleischman, joins us now. You wrote the book. She writes a chapter mm -hmm. toward the end, well, the end, really, which is just most incredible. And, and I, I want to kind of start at the beginning a little bit with you because this was not... It hasn't been an easy life for you, and this was not an easy book to, to uh, sit down and write. No. <laughs> it, it, you were reticent at first when they approached you and yeah, said, this so is such an incredible story, you should write about it. Right. We were first <clears throat> approached in uh, 2008, and uh, I'm not a writer. I have uh, a couple of partners in an ad agency, so I do a bit of writing, but not, uh, not that not kind of writing. That. And uh, a, um, a, public, a, pub, a publisher called me and said, you know, would you consider it? And I said, well, you know, I've thought about suicide notes, but never I've thought about <laughs> a book. I, I was joking, of course. Um, and we decided that it was important to write a book because Carly's story had been told in the media in short snippets. Mm -hmm. But the story is so powerful and important that it needed a platform that had space. And a book has space. It has hundreds of pages. And there's so much to it. This, but this book, your story, Carly's story, has changed the way people look at autism. And one of the things I felt most poignant was when you said that you and your wife looked at it very differently. And, and at one point, your wife felt that, you know, it was just a matter of finding a way to unlock. Mm -hmm. She always felt some way there was something she could reach her somehow. Yeah. Could Tammy refer to it as a button? Like she said, I think there's got to be a button in Carly's brain that if we could just press it, everything would resolve. And of course, there's no button, not mm. that we know of yet. Maybe one day uh, we'll learn there's a button in there. So we found the only other ways we could do it with you know, therapy, speech therapy, behavioral therapy, ABA therapy, uh, medication at times. And you just kind of marshal forward and you just keep trying to make... Um, make as many opportunities for Carly as possible to uh, to progress. It's amazing the the, the development of her <clears throat> ability, and I'll, I'll say to talk, but in essence she's nonverbal, mm -hmm. but she does talk and through the computer and, and everything else. But when she was two, at the time of diagnosis, um, your world was thrown upside down, as was your entire family. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a, a long protracted couple of years. At two, she was diagnosed with autism. My wife was diagnosed with cancer, and then we had subsequent diagnoses for Carly after, so that included developmental delays, PDD, GDD, a whole bunch of oral motor apraxia, a whole bunch of other, um, um, you know, sort of comorbidities, if you will. Like How did like, you put one foot in front of the other? We have incredible support network. We have um, staff that works with Carly. Her, her two lead therapists have been with her since she was... Barb's been with her since she was two, so 15 years, and Howie, a few years after that. Uh, we had um, great friends and family that would just, you know, sort of marshal behind us. And you don't really have a choice, right? Like, when you have a kid like that, people said, how do you do it? Well, what options did we have? Mm. Like, if we didn't use therapy and we didn't use these special schools, what else would we have done? There really were no other choices. Tell me about the breakthrough that when she was 10. Yeah, so she's had, I would say it's been a series of breakthroughs. So at 10, she reached across to a, what's called an augmentative communication device. It was like an old world computer, if you will. And uh, she hadn't been using the keyboard on it. She'd been using the picture symbols on it, but the keyboard was up and she typed help teeth hurt. And uh, those were not words that, they, that wow. the therapist had taught her. She was trying to describe that she was feeling sick. And uh, she tells in her chapter what was going on that day, you know, that she just didn't have exactly the right, right. words for it. And then she threw up. Uh, and then for the next couple of weeks, she didn't write very much. But then bit by bit, little splinters of her world would come out through her writing. And now, I mean, you can read the last chapter. It's quite incredible. It is incredible that she wrote. And you've also included some excerpts of some of the social media because yeah. she's become a flashpoint for so many people that, that want to talk to her 
about autism, about their child, about you know themselves. How do you describe this? And and uh, in her chapter, she uses the analogy of a coffee shop mm. to try to explain to people. Well, autism is different in every single person, but for Carly, she t she said it was like um, having one conversation and being able to focus on it. And then you take it from there as to how she describes yeah, it. Yeah, so um, it's, an incredible, it's an incredible part of the chapter. So what she says is sensory integration is a real problem. So for you and I, we just have to listen to one another. But she hears everything. She hears everything in the next room. Every light, every color, every smell, every sensation. So if someone brushes against her or her shirt touches her sleeve, it draws her focus so extremely that she can't hear what's being said. So uh, my partners at John Street got the idea that we should build an interactive website, which will launch in a few weeks, to allow people like you and me, neurotypical people, mm -hmm. to experience Carly's cafe, as we call it, what it's like to be Carly and not be able to control your senses. She calls it audio filtering. Audio filtering is her word. And know. it's not just audio. It's not really just audio. Really, it's, it's, it's filtering out all the different senses and putting them into separate folders so that she can make sense of what's going on around her. And she believes that everyone with autism has the ability to audio filter. They just need to get there on their own time and you just need to stay uh, consistent with therapy and really stay behind them because they will get there. Did you have any idea how this book was going to turn things on its ear. Well, also for Carly, of yeah. course. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about the book per se, but I know Carly has the ability to turn things on its ear. Yeah. And uh, we see that in social media. She's got, I think, 32,000 Facebook followers from around the world and 25,000 Twitter followers. And I think what's most moving are the stories that people are telling mm -hmm. us, that since they read about her or heard about her, it made them look at either family members or friends or, or children they work with uh, with autism, it made, made them look at these kids totally differently. And it, it gave them some hope and some uh, help that, uh, and guidance that they could actually reach these kids and, and give them another chance. What would you like to say about all this? Because we know the numbers of autism. They just keep going up and mm -hmm. up and up. Um, and, and in terms of action, government action or caregiving. Yeah. So the latest CDC numbers say that one in 88 uh, children in North America will be born uh, with autism, one in 54 boys. So that's no longer a niche issue. That's something as mainstream right. as cancer or any other kind of um, uh, illness or ailment or disability that the government has to deal with. And, you know, we'd like to see the federal government step up on this and look at insurance reform. In the states now, there's been tremendous breakthrough that private payers are, are starting to cover the costs of ABA therapy. Whereas in Canada, there's very limited coverage, so it falls on the parents. There's some coverage, but it's very yeah. spotty and it's very short term and it's very hard to access. Uh, so the parents have to bear the costs of it. So we'd like the government to step up now and, uh, and, and take part in, in, in solving this problem. This is a most incredible story. Thank you for telling it. Thank you. Thanks and for having me And writing it instead of just little notes like that. Arthur, thank Thanks you so, so much, much for being here. And you'll find a link to Carly's website at canadaam.ctv.ca.